Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to the prep video for the fifth lesson in this series on developing a survival game. In the main tutorial, we'll work on the health system. This video and this series have been brought to you by my Patreon sponsors, like Random Number Generator. In this tutorial, we'll work on our health system, as I said, and we'll set up some variables. So we'll have our current player character's health and our max health. Now you don't always see max health used, but one of the benefits of this is if the max health changes, so let's say you have a max health starting at 25 and that becomes 50, then 75, then 100, then 150, or what have you, instead of having to find every place where you're checking for that max health, you have one variable you can use over and over again in those locations. So it just makes it cleaner and easier to use. We'll also create three functions. We'll have two setter functions and one getter function. And actually in the next prep video, I will be talking about the differences between setters and getters in a bit more depth. So we'll have one for damaging the character, so changing the current health downwards, and one for healing the character, so changing the current health upwards. And then we'll have one that gets the current health variable. And then I'll show you a little bit of how to test this and how to do some debugging. Not that there are any bugs in this particular video, but just how to make sure that what you've already implemented is working the way that you intend for it to work. So again, let's talk about polymorphism. I know it's the third video I've brought this up in, but as a core component of OOP, it is vital that we understand it. And I've told you about when I violated in the past, and I've given you challenges around those violations. Now this conversation is going to be a bit different. We aren't going to be talking about the same thing about violating polymorphism here. We're going to be talking about why we might actually want to violate polymorphism. So as I said in this tutorial, there are two functions that set health. One that increases it and one that decreases it. If you're good at some basic math, you can very easily create a polymorphic function that does both. So why don't we? Why am I not giving this challenge? Why am I doing two functions? Is it because we're doing a tutorial? I want to give you that challenge. Well, as I said, I'm not giving you that challenge. Is it because we're doing a tutorial and it's easier to read? That's part of the reason to be fair, but it's actually a, really a choice here. We have a choice between good OOP with one function do, that does both. It increases and decreases health. So we can add to our current health. We can take away from our current health. It's cleaner and it's smaller. It's less code to run, it's less code to compile. Um, but this means that we have to use both positive and negative values to change health. So if we want to increase health, we're adding a positive value in. And listen carefully to my wording here. If we want to decrease health, we are adding a negative value in. Because remember, um, x plus negative y, it really is x minus y at the end of the day. Now, doing so might be cleaner and smaller code, uh, but using both positive and negative values you can make mistakes. So doing so, you, you can have some bugs. You might mean to increase somebody's health, but put a negative value in, so you decrease it. Or you might mean to do damage, and instead of putting a negative value in, you put a positive one and increase health. You also, if you calculate damage, have to you know make sure that ends up being a negative value somehow, or converting it over to a negative value, which means just doing multiply by negative one at the end. But still, it can be buggy. It can lead to programmer error. So the other option is to have two functions, which, yeah, it's not as good as OOP, but it's easier to read because you can clearly tell, hey, this one's meant to increase the health and this one's clearly meant to decrease the health. I don't need to make sure the math symbols are right. Um, the values will always be positive well, or always be negative. It can go either way, but they'll always go in one direction. So if you increase health, the function is going to take a positive value and add that into a into the current health. 
If you decrease health, as we do in this tutorial, it will take a positive value and subtract that value from the current health. And as a result, you're less likely to have bugs. But again, it's not good OOP. Now, when I do my personal sort of projects, um, I, I will typically use the one function version just because it's easier to, for me to work with. But for in some projects, I do actually do find the two functions are easier to work with. Um, it, it, it's really up to you on what you prefer and what is easier for you to work with. But I want you to understand the basic math and the choice here. So if you don't get how to do this with polymorphism, so how to do one function that does both, I, I, I will say as a challenge, try to make it, try to make that function. But you really don't need to. You don't really need to have uh, one function here. Two functions is perfectly fine. So in this case, it is okay to violate polymorphism. At least in my opinion, it is. I'm sure somebody will disagree in the comments below or have a different opinion or have a different suggestion. And that, that's kind of the point where I said there isn't a perfect way to do things. There are going to be different approaches to how to tackle these ideas and these features. So next, with a health system, we have to ask, what type of variables do we want to use? Do we want to use a float or do we want to use an integer? Well, the answer to that is yes, either is fine. I will use floats in the series. I've seen other tutorials use integers. I've used integers in projects. They're, they both work. This is really down to choice. There is benefits and, and detriments to either. There are some cool things you can do with either. When we get into the some of the later material, we'll explore things you can do. Um, and there are nodes that will work with both. So it, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I, I personally prefer floats um, for certain reasons, uh, but for the, at the same time, I could do the same things I'm doing with ints and not have that many changes. So it, it's really a choice again. So what is the difference at the end of the day? Well, anything affecting health needs to be calculated in the same system. Because convert, I mean, you don't need to, but should be. So damage calculations, should be in the same system. If you have a float as a health variable, then your damage should be calculated as a float. Your armor absorption should be float. Should be in the operative word. It doesn't need to be, you can convert. Now, the key difference in my experience when working with either a float or an integer is when you do the UMG, which is the UI, the HUD the player sees that displays their health, that there are some differences in the nodes and the calculations and conversions you might need to do. Um, and it's just something to be mindful of. But again, it's honestly not that hard to work with. It, they're just, just slightly different nodes you use there. So it is really down to being a choice. Now that said, for those of you who like floats and are really kind of math minded, there is something that's useful you can do with a float that you can't with an integer uh, that is potentially problematic. So instead of using a zero to a hundred system, with a integer or a float, for the math minded folks out there, you can use a proportion based system of 0.0 to one. Now, for those of you who don't understand what I'm talking about, feel free to tune out for the next couple of moments. Um, it, it isn't a big deal is what I'm getting at here. This proportion system is really useful if you understand how to work with proportions. Um, it actually makes working with the UMG oddly easier, but it, it leads to a problem. How precise are your floats? And how precise are your floats when you have to do calculations for damage? And with this one, your damage, your armor absorption, all that sort of stuff really, really should be in float and needs to be in proportion as well. So that 0.0 to one range. Now, yes, you could do it in an int and convert it. It's a nightmare to do so in my opinion. Um, but it, that that math, that that's real tricky to do sometimes. And thinking in small numbers like that can be, works for some. When I'm, when I'm doing research work, yeah, I can think that way. But when I'm doing coding, I'm thinking about gameplay mechanics, that doesn't work for my brain for some reason. And then what happens if your character's max health is 150 or it can max at 150? How, how, I get, yes, that, you know, the range of 0.0 to one suddenly changes, but you have to then calculate all the other proportions to fit around that, and it can get a bit messy. All right. For those of you who weren't math-minded, 
tune back in, please. All right, we're going to talk about clamps versus branches. And I'm, I, I, I'm going to sound a bit jaded here because I have had people neckbeard either direction on this on some of my tutorials. If you, I will say at one point in this, go look at the comment section of my RTS tutorials and you will see people saying, oh, why do you use a clamp? You know, it's not as good as a branch. Or why using a branch is not as good as a clamp? Honestly, I, I think every single time I've heard that complaint, I, I have the same sort of response in my head. And I actually have put it on this slide. Okay, so what is a clamp versus a branch first off? A clamp takes a numeric value, be it an integer, a float, an int32, an int64, what have you. And if that value is below a minimum that you set, it resets that value to the minimum. So if your minimum is zero and you try to pass in a value that's negative one, it converts negative one to zero. Now, if it is above the maximum, so if that value you pass in is 105 and your max is 100, it resets it to 100, the max that you put in. Think about a health system. If your health max is at 100, then you don't want to have a health of 105. If your health min's at zero, well, your character is dead, it can really go under. Um, so it doesn't really matter, I guess, for the lower end, but you might want to clamp it. And a branch, well, as you already know, a branch is an if-then statement. And you can do a branch where if a value is greater than the max, then set that value to the max. Or, and or, another branch where if the value is less than the min, set it to the min. So to be clear, you can, you'd can you have two branches for if you want to do a full clamp. You'd have one for the min, one and one branch for the max. If you just needed the max, you'd only have one branch then. So you with both can do the same. So which is better? Like I said, kind of had the same response to this and I might be jaded after all the sort of weird comments I've seen about this. Um, yeah, like I said, read through the comments on the RTS series, go to other channels and look at their tutorials on around this and their comment sections. This is just fun. Um, and every so often on my Discord this comes up, but it's not as antagonistic somehow as it is feels like it is on YouTube. Now, they do the same thing. <laughs> Let me stress that. They do the same thing. The speed difference between the two is really negligible. And here's my comment to people say, oh, well, a clamp is doing both. And, you know, if you're at once, which makes it slower and a branch, you know, at least it's faster because it's going through different nodes. Well, one, first off, not fully true. Second off, and more importantly, at the end of the day here, if that speed difference matters, then there is something horribly wrong in your code. We are talking about fractions of a microsecond here. We're talking about a tick at, at best. Seriously, if your code breaks because you're using uh, a branch versus a clamp and the speed difference breaks it, there is something wrong in your code. Um, if it breaks it because you put the wrong logic in and you're getting weird numbers, that's a different matter. Uh, that's just logic. Th these things happen. If it breaks due to how fast it calculates, please don't comment uh, below. Please look at your code and work out why, what what form of OOP you violated. Because most likely there's some violation of OOP actually, and you, you, you're you probably violating, uh, violating encapsulation somewhere and getting information you don't need and filling your RAM up. And that's why the speed matters. It could be other reasons, but that's more likely. So on a personal, I will say, I, I you can use either. In the tutorials and prototypes, I tend to use branches because they're just easier to walk someone through the logic with. Um, though I also have used clamps in tutorials. And in personal projects, I tend to use clamps. Now, sometimes if I only need to worry about the max, for example, like today when we do health, we're gonna worry about if it's over the max, then I use a branch. Though at other points, like the RTS tutorial series, when we have the zoom, I use a clamp because I just wanted to copy and paste the clamp quickly and make sure that all the values stayed the same for zooming in and zooming out. So it really is up to you. Um, yeah, whatever, whatever you find easier to read and work with. And now branches. Let's just talk about branches for a minute because this comes up a lot and there's a lot of really common mistakes here.
I honestly find reading branches in C++ to be much easier than I find them to be working in, in, in Blueprint. Because here we have these curly brackets around our statement. And then we have this thing that says more code. I couldn't think of an example code to write here. So what this tells me is that if x is zero, thinking about clamps here, I am going to set x to be zero. So if x is less than zero, so if we have a value of x, so let's say health is less than zero, set health to zero, and then do this code here. Now, that's really simple. I can tell when my if statement's done because there's that closing bracket. And then we, if it's not, we skip on down past it and go to this more, co this more code line. So either way, we continue on to this more code. Sorry, it's really hard to draw arrows on this. So there just tends to be these common mistakes I find in, in people who are new to Unreal. Even I make this mistake sometimes and go, oh, I'm an idiot for not catching this. Um, in Blueprint, it might be easier to read code in general for some people. I, I sometimes don't find it, as I've just said. But here's the question. In this example, which, by the way, comes from the code we'll be working on I, in this video, I will say, however, uh, we stop right here. We don't have this entire section. This we add in after we do the UI. So ignore that. Where, where does the if statement end? If our current health is greater than or equal to our max health, where, where, where do we stop here? Well, let's say that if that statement's true, that we want to just re make sure the current health is set to the max health, and then we want to do this event, and that's the if statement. That's the where that curly bracket should be. So that's our curly bracket. By the way, if you're wondering why max is equal to here, it's because of this trigger healed thing. Don't worry about it. We'll go into that when we get to the UI stuff. So if false happens or true happens, what I really want to happen is a stamina regen thing to happen. By the way, the stamina regen was literally just tossed in as an example here. In the actual function, it's a return node there. So I come through here. This is my if statement of true, and then we do this. Well, that's not going to work. The way that Unreal reads this is it reads everything on this line is that conditional statement. Everything in here is in that curly bracket. So it will not work correctly. It will just go straight through and the false will actually go straight to return. So what do we need to do is we need to come off the false and we need to do something like this. So you notice now that we come through, this is actually our curly bracket. We stop here. We stop, we start here. We set the health, we do this uh, event for the UI, and then both the true and the false continue into here. And in fact, between these two reroutes and the false, you can have code. You can do other things on the false branch that you don't want to happen on the true branch. So it's a very common mistake for people to forget to come off this false and go on and come back into what they want to do outside of that bracket and those conditional statements. Next, you'll hear me use the term arguments. And I will say really quickly off the bat, because I do have this later on the slide, anyone who's familiar with arguments versus parameter, yes, I know they're not the same thing, but I will be using them interchangeably because this is not geared towards more that C++ side of stuff. So an argument is a value passed into a function. In this tutorial, this video, the tutorial for health in particular, will pass a float value to modify the current health of the player character. So from the outside, when we call the function, we're going to pass in a value called heal value. So let me just draw over here. And that's the argument. We're putting in a value here where it says one. Um, inside the function, what this looks like is, well, here's that heal value. And here's what we're doing with it. We're adding it to the character's current health. Yes, I get this as a parameter and not really a, a uh, argument. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to call things arguments. And finally, challenges. As always, we have challenges. This one's a bit different. There are no direct challenges this time. 
Not even those related to the polymorphism thing. So, instead what I want you to do is look at the code up until this point, from video one to video five. I think about everything we've talked about, branches, clamps, polymorphism, selectors, what have you, and consider how you might improve the code up until this point. All right, this is probably the longest prep video I have done. I apologize for that, but all of this said, I hope this is explaining what we're doing, why we're doing it, the choices you can make, and how you can deviate from the tutorials when you're a bit more confident with code and with blueprints. All of that said, I look forward to seeing you in the tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.